All right, so this is gonna be the video this week. It's just gonna be me showing off some of my cameras, my camera collection. Um, started off with the first Polaroid that I ever got. And it is this Polaroid Spectra. Got it from my grandma, it was hers. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna put up some pictures um, that I've taken with these cameras, but Polaroid Spectra, one of my favorite. It's a classic, rest in peace. They stopped making film for it in oh, 2019, so. Um, I've got one pack left that I'm saving. So, fingers crossed that it will last as long as I need it to. But, rest in peace, my boy. Uh, one of my next cameras that I bought was this Stranger Things themed uh, uh, One Step 2. I don't know if you can really see. There it is. There's a Demogorgon on the bottom here. And obviously, the, uh, all the text is upside down. This one didn't get a lot of use because it just underexposed most of the pictures that I ever took with it, um, which is really annoying. I took it to Disney because I was like, oh, you know, it'll be cheaper to buy film for it than the Spectra camera that I had when I went. So it kind of sucked that uh, this one didn't get a lot of love, but it still sits on my shelf. You know, it's still there. Obviously, I've got my fair share of these box-type cameras. I've got a Sun 600, 600 Business Edition. This one underexposes. It's the light sensor's broken, so it doesn't really work. But I received this one from a friend, a Sun 600 with the sonar autofocus. Great story about this one is I put a pack of film in it to see if it worked, and it automatically spit out four photos. So that was sick watching. Eight dollars disappear in front of my eyes. So it works fine now though. Takes great photos, they're sharp. I've got too many cameras sitting here. Then I got the cool cam, nice red uh a red Polaroid. Cool cam. Next I got this Polaroid Impulse, uh which I've had for quite a while. Um I really like this one. I really like the just kind of the shape. Um, that I had the lens kind of reminded me of the photos I was taking on Spectra. So I like that. All of these cameras are they're kind of dusty. I haven't used this in a while. <laughs> but I found this one at an antique store and got it for like, I don't know, 15 bucks. Used it a ton. Uh, liked it so much that when I found this one on Facebook Marketplace, the Impulse AF with the sonar autofocus, I had to buy it, so I drove to Frankfort, Kentucky, and which is like, I don't know, two hours, two and a half hours away from here, I don't know, and bought this. It looked disgusting when I found it on Facebook Marketplace, but I got it for, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks, cleaned it off, and it's worked perfect ever since. Uh, this one has been my tried and true for a very long time, um, even after I got an SX-70, I still liked to travel with this one because I just like it. It's nice and it's blue, it stands out, it's unique looking. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I do have an SX-70. I actually have two. One's completely broken, but I got them both for 20 bucks each, which was crazy even at the time that I found them. So, you know, sick. Got one of these, it broke for two and a half years, and then I fixed it, so now it works. Got the little tongue on there. Um, I've got a f little flash bar somewhere for this as well, but obviously this one is the classic. Obviously I've got my Polar Land camera, the fake uh, Lego one, which I do quite love. I love this Lego. I do have a real one as well. I've never used this. I got it with the purchase of some FP whatever peel apart film for like 20 bucks. I got a pack of iType, this camera, and FP100 for like 16 bucks, which is crazy. I don't know where I find such good deals all the time, but of course I do have a Polaroid Now Plus. This was a Christmas gift that I didn't want, but you know. <laughs> 
I got it. This is the camera that I give to Bree to use. This is technically hers now, but she left it here, so it's in the video. She forgot to take the lens cap on one photo, and that really cracked me up, so she'll get better. She'll learn. Whoa, I almost dropped it. Of course, I have my my sweet baby, my i2. This is the one I actually do take everywhere. Great. Sharper than the SX-70. So that's pretty sick. Um, takes photos, just they're beautiful and sharp. Obviously still, I have to stop it down or it's underexposed everywhere, so, you know. But I quite love this camera a lot. So I'm gonna keep using this over anything else. Last but certainly not least, I don't even know if this is gonna fit in frame, but I've got the Macro 5. Uh, this is the uh, the crime scene medical camera. <laughs> it's really, it doesn't, it takes up the whole frame. This thing's huge. Um, but I love this thing. This is sick. I got this for a hundred bucks on eBay. Um, it still works. I took this on, on one trip, on a French trip, took a bunch of pictures of everybody with it, some portraits and such. But this is fun. This is great. This is a nice little fun party camera to bust out and be like, yo, look at this giant Polaroid camera I have that can take a picture of your eyeball. The only problem is, is it's uh, spectrofilm size, so I had to make a uh, adapter that I can fit regular Polaroid photos in and a battery. So this is the solution now. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it spits out two photos and kind of, you know, ruins two photos. But, you know, at some point I'll get this fixed and I'll figure out a way to make it more consistent. All right, next we're gonna do some film cameras. Uh, here is one that has a special place in my heart. This is my grandma's Fujifilm Discovery that she gave me. This is uh, basically the camera she, you know, took every photo of us growing up. So it's special in that way. I think my mom also had one, but this is this is my grandma's that she gave me. So I love this camera. Would still take this in a heartbeat if I had to pick something to bring with me. It's great. This is the... I don't even know what the name of this one is. Canon Sure Shot. Uh, I've had two of these. One was broken. This one is hanging on for dear life. It's got a big crack in it where I dropped it. So hopefully it's not, uh, you know, ruining the photos that I have in there right now. I have some black and white film in here. But it was a great camera. Found it at a thrift store for five bucks, ten bucks, whatever. I don't know. I just, uh, I think it's just special because this is one of the cameras that I picked up when I first started getting into film photography, so, you know, it's nothing crazy by any means, but there she is. This one I got a couple months ago and I am in love with. Uh, hopefully it is uh, exposing photos correctly and actually working. I don't know yet. You know, the film's getting developed, so fingers crossed. Got this on eBay, came from Japan. But it's just a half frame camera that's got, I just scared the cat with that. Got two lenses. So it's got a wide lens um, and the flash pops up. And then it's got a uh, telephoto lens. So pretty neat little half frame camera. It's just a little zone focusing half frame camera um, that I thought kind of had a nice aesthetic with a little red button, a little red accent on there. I'm a sucker for for gold as well, so and obviously I'm a sucker for that name. So hopefully it uh the photos turned out good. I mean I took 75 photos I think in a roll, so that's what's pretty sick about half frame. Uh, only bad thing is flash doesn't work. Like it pops up, but it just the flash doesn't go off. So. You know, but it's pocketable. It's cute. Got this boy. This little sweet Minolta boy. Um, the X370N. Um, I have another one of these that isn't the N, and it's like a silver, you know, 
vintage look to it, kind of like a Canon AE-1. Um, I don't know where that's at right now, but this is a great camera. I've taken this, not on any trips, but I, you know, I took photos around Cincinnati, got one of the, one of my more favorite photos I've ever taken at an arcade with this one. Just a classic little, uh, you know, SLR. It was definitely uh, a step up from shooting, you know, on one of these. Really kind of taught me how to slow down and take some photos, which, you know, you don't get to with a digital camera quite the same way when you can take 10,000 photos on one card. But, yeah, it was nice. I think I found it for maybe 15, 20 bucks at a flea market thing or a thrift shop. So, lucked out super well. The lens is perfect. Isn't all, you know, gross. So, I'll probably use this again soon. Because I've got a I've got a 28 millimeter lens now for this. So, might give it a try. Speaking of another broken camera, I've got this uh, Calamar Reflex. It's a SLR medium format camera. Little waist waist level viewfinder thing. It's broken. I thought I could fix it. Couldn't fix it. Broke it even more when I tried to fix it. But it just doesn't see. It just does this continuously. It doesn't stop. It's supposed to. It used to. I don't know. It's just broken. This is far beyond what I can fix because it's basically just like a clock on the inside with a bunch of tiny gears. This is just not... Ooh, just not something that I can fix. But it's pretty. It sits on my shelf and looks pretty. Oh shoot, I think I did pay 80 bucks for it though. That's the painful part, but a nice little 80 buck project that I couldn't figure out, but it just sits and looks pretty, which is okay too, I guess. Ooh. Forgot about this one. I do have a Polaroid Go. Uh, it's fun, you know, it's tiny, so it's not easy to, you know, just give to somebody and be like, oh, I go, you know, go take some photos. And then, you know, then you got some tiny little photos. Oh, there's me in the lens. Hello. Of course, I've got a Super 8 camera. This is a Bell & Howe 2144XL. Um, I don't know if this works yet, but it does run. And I took it on vacation uh, to Gatlinburg. So at some point, we'll get supplemental Gatlinburg footage. At least two and a half minutes of it, or three minutes, or whatever. Um, but it's nice. It's got slow motion. It's got a... Uh, you know, the zoom rocker and such. I can shoot one frame a second? Heck yeah. You can see how much I got left. I think that's accurate. I don't remember if I took it out or not. But, you know, it's clean. It sounds like it runs. Hopefully it runs. Um, and I've got some black and white. Oh, I think it's Tri-X. Yeah, I've got some Tri-X in there. So, at some point, I'll finish the roll and then send it off and see if it works. <laughs> you know, or I'll waste, eight, I have wasted 80 bucks. But, you know. All right, moving on to digital. Of course we have what everybody wants and what everybody can't get their hands on. Um, an X100V. I bought this way before it was the, uh, the trendy thing to buy. I bought this at the beginning of 2021. With that, uh, with that Joe Brandon money, you know, that we all got, the 1200 bucks or whatever it was. Back when this camera did cost <laughs> a lot less. Um, but I got my hands on it. It has been... I love this thing. I do truly love this camera. So it sucks that, you know, I don't get to take it around as much as I would want to. Because, you know, it makes more sense to carry a camera that does good video at the same time as taking good pictures. So... You know, but I'm gonna hold on to it. Um, I've got one little scuff in it, which sucks, but you know, it's okay. It's a it's a camera that I took traveling, so it's gonna get beat up. But took some great photos on on this, some of my favorite, and this is really what got me into digital f photography and digital cameras in general. Of course, this is not the last Fujifilm camera I bought. 
I have an XH2S that's recording right now that I bought, you know, for video, but I ended up using it for pictures too. And then after less than a year of having the XH2S, I did buy an X-T5, I don't know, like a month ago. Um, and this camera I've majorly fallen in love with. Um, so right now this is my favorite camera that I have. Takes great video, takes great pictures. You know, it's about it's about the same kind of size. Doesn't quite fit in a in a little bag the same way that this can, but. Um, so far, I've loved taking this around everywhere. It does, you know, everything that this camera can do, except it's less bulky and it takes 40 megapixel photos, which is crazy. Um, I also recently bought this T Artisan uh, 27 millimeter, so keeps it nice and small. So I'm excited to take this on an actual vacation this next week. So. Look out for that video next week. Either that video or it'll be solar eclipse stuff. I don't know yet. We'll find out. But <laughs> but I don't think I'll be getting rid of this XH2S. It is good to have as a you know as a B camera. Or this is a B camera and this is a camera. You know, it's good to have both of them. Because my dad has my Canon now, so because he's filming putting the uh, the camper together. So. Um, that's it. I think that's every camera I have that isn't like, I've got a, a different one that's way bigger, like an old video broadcast camera, but I am not going to try to, if I put that, it takes up the whole frame. So, and it's not anything interesting to look at, but that's it. This is my camera collection. Um, I might have some more hiding somewhere that I don't know, but this is, you know, this is it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. <laughs>